What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be talking all about whole home or multi-room audio using our home pods. Here, you move this to the bedroom. Now playing in the bedroom. And I'll show you how I set up my home pods using room, zones, and speaker groups. Here, we play this upstairs also. Now also playing in the upstairs. It's never been easier to create a simple whole home audio experience thanks to the HomePod. Siri, intercom everywhere, dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. Let's go. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to another video. My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit platform with new videos published every Sunday morning. You know, up until fairly recently, multiple room or whole home audio was kind of reserved for like more high-end homes or, you know, custom installations. But these days with something like the HomePod mini or even other AirPlay 2 speakers like Sonos, anyone can create a multi-room audio setup pretty easily without having to spend a ton of money or run wires you know, through all your walls. Now today, I'm really gonna focus on doing this with the HomePods because that's what I use. Again, you can create multi-room audio with AirPlay 2 speakers as well. You just currently don't have the ability to use Siri on them for controlling your audio or other features like handoff or intercom. I'll put chapters below in case you're looking for something specific and wanna to skip to that part of the video, but essentially, this video will be broken into three main parts. One, setting up rooms, zones, and speaker groups. Two, controlling your speakers and audio. And three, using the intercom feature across your home and beyond. And if you wanna see my actual in-depth review of the HomePod Mini and everything it can do, I will put a link uh, to that video up here somewhere and also down below in the description. So the first thing to think about is which rooms you want your speakers in, how many speakers, and then how you might wanna control them. For example, you can pair two HomePods or HomePod minis in the same room as a stereo pair, and you can even configure a single HomePod or a stereo pair as default speakers for your TV if you want. But whether you use them for your TV or not, they should still work fine as a part of your whole home audio system, say, you know, for playing back music or something like that. It's really easy to create a stereo pair of HomePods. Once you add two HomePods in the same room in the Home app, you'll be asked if you want to group them together as a pair, and you can also do it later in the settings of the HomePod if you want. Now, my setup is pretty basic. I have individual rooms, such as dining room, master bedroom, kitchen, kids' rooms, etc. And then I have zones as well. Now, multiple rooms can belong to a single or multiple zones. So, in my case, I have a zone called upstairs, I have a zone called downstairs, and I also have a zone called outside. You put your rooms in the appropriate zones. Um, again, rooms can belong to multiple zones if you want. For example, my garage garage can belong to my downstairs zone as well as my outside zone if I want. But by using zones, you can essentially create speaker groups, if you will. For example, not only can you specify which room to play audio in, you can also specify which zone to play audio in. I can tell Siri to play music downstairs and uh, she'll play music on all the home pods in that zone. So all the rooms in that downstairs zone, excluding all the other home pods in the house that aren't, you know, in that zone. Now zones aren't super obvious in the home app as far as creating and editing them. But if you want to create a zone, just go into the room settings for any room and you'll see a zone option. Tap that to add that room to an existing zone or create a new zone. To delete a zone, just swipe left. 
of the third party apps that I like to use often can give you a better view of your zones and the ability to, you know, edit them just a little more clearly in my opinion. Either way, they all do the same thing and it's pretty easy just to create multiple zones uh, for your rooms. And that leads us to controlling our speakers. So as mentioned, you can tell Siri to play to a specific zone, which will in turn play to each room with a HomePod in that zone, excluding all the other rooms not in that zone. And you can tell Siri, of course, to play to a specific room, but did you know you can also tell her to play to multiple rooms? For example, I can say something like, Siri, play my summertime playlist in the studio and in the living room. And she will then start playing in those rooms. You can stop playing in a single room or an entire zone. Siri, stop playing in the studio. Or you can say, Siri, stop playing here, and it'll stop playing in the current room, but will continue playing everywhere else if you're currently playing on multiple speakers. That makes sense? And of course, you can simply say, Siri, play everywhere to play it on all your speakers throughout the house, or say, Siri, stop playing everywhere to stop playing on everything in the house one thing to note though if you are playing on multiple speakers and then you just stop playing everywhere the next time that you tell Siri to play on one of those speakers it will still probably be grouped with whatever speakers you had it grouped with last time so keep that in mind but you know in my experience this works really well to play on multiple speakers throughout the house and all the audio just syncs up really well uh, all wirelessly, it's pretty amazing, really. Now you can move audio from one room to another, which is really cool as you're kind of doing things around the house. You can say things like, Siri, move this to the bedroom and it'll transfer whatever's playing in that room, you know, to the bedroom. Now that's sort of how you can use Siri to control music across multiple rooms and zones, but you can of course use Siri to control a number of other things regarding the playback. Here are just a few examples of the things you can say to control your music. And did you know that you can also use Siri on the HomePod to listen to local radio stations? So let's try that out. Hey Siri, play WCOS. Now playing 97.5 WCOS provided by our radio. So there you go. So that's a local radio station here and it uses iHeartRadio uh, by default to play those local radio stations. You can also listen to music or podcasts from third party streaming apps that support it. Still no Spotify here just to show you. Hey Siri, play Sublime Radio on Pandora. Okay Shane, now playing Sublime Radio on Pandora. And there you go. Siri will use that third party service to, uh, to play my audio. Um, again, I know it supports Pandora and a few others. Still no Spotify, but for, I use Apple Music. I guess I should have said that to begin with. That's my primary streaming service for audio. Of course, you can use Apple Podcasts and you know a number of other services. And then there's always AirPlay uh, if you do want to use Spotify or something that's not supported like through the HomePod natively uh, like that, there's always AirPlay. Now, in addition to using Siri, you can use the control center on your Apple devices to either AirPlay content like I was just talking about from your device or control the other speakers in your house separately from your phone. To do that within the control center, just tap the little button to control the speakers and TVs and tap which speaker you'd like to connect to. By tapping the AirPlay icon, you can then choose additional speakers if you wanna play in multiple rooms. Now also when music is playing, you know, on HomePods or speakers in your house, you will see the info and controls right there on your phone. Uh, you can tap into it to change the music or whatever. Some people I think love this and some people probably hate it. I don't mind it. I think it's kind of cool to have that easy access right there. And lastly, one feature that I feel we have to talk about when discussing multi-room audio with HomePods is the intercom feature. This is one of my absolute favorite features of using HomePods in multiple rooms. Intercom lets you send and receive messages from one HomePod to another or to multiple HomePods, and it even works with iPhone, iPads, uh, iPod Touch, Apple Watch, and CarPlay. And Intercom messages can even broadcast through AirPods. 
Pretty amazing technology, really. I, this stuff kind of blows my mind. You can determine who receives intercom notifications and when in the home settings of the home app. To send an intercom message, just say, hey Siri, intercom or announce, followed by your message. You'll hear that little confirmation sound to know that the message has been sent. And by default, messages will send to everyone in the home, all the home pods and stuff, and every room in the home, unless you specify a certain room or zone. For example, like I say, Siri intercom upstairs, hey everybody, it's time to go, are y'all ready? Or I can say, Siri intercom Macy's room, uh, dinner's ready, stuff like that. And to reply to an intercom, you simply say, hey Siri, reply followed by your message. Intercom can of course be used with Siri, but you can also find an intercom button in the Home app on iPhones, iPads, and even the Apple Watch. It's really cool that it works across all these devices. Um, I'm kind of surprised at how well and clear it works even on the Apple Watch. All right, I'll be right there. You can get and receive intercom messages when you're not even home. So, I mean, there's just a lot of different scenarios. You know, you're pulling up to the yard, to the house, and you want to intercom everybody in the house. Hey, come help me with the groceries. You can do that from, you know, Siri in your car or your Apple Watch or, uh, you know, maybe you're trying to get a hold of your kid. They're not answering their phone or whatever. Just a ton of useful ways that you can really utilize this uh, really awesome feature. And we really utilize this a lot. In fact, I really just appreciated this the other day uh, when I was at my buddy's house down the road and my youngest was actually playing with his kid upstairs at his house. And when it was time to go, I had to yell upstairs like a caveman multiple times to get my daughter's attention so we could leave. Um, and I was like, dude, I told my buddy, we really gotta get you some home pods in here for that intercom feature. Yeah, I just, I hate having to yell and now I really don't have to anymore. Uh, well, at least not in my house. So intercom is a really great way to send those messages to everyone in your house. Um, and it's probably that one feature that to me really sets the home pods apart from say, just using typical AirPlay 2 speakers right now. But whether you're using AirPlay speakers or home pods, as you can see, it's never been easier to create a whole home audio experience with great sound that all syncs up wirelessly throughout your house. What a great time we're living in. Now, if you have any questions about how all this works or if there's anything that I didn't cover, feel free to drop a comment down below. Hit that like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you haven't already for new HomeKit smart home videos every Sunday morning right here. And if you really wanna support this channel even further, consider hitting that join button to become a channel member and get access to some cool perks like behind the scenes, access to our members only Discord community, uh, early access to new videos and more. Check out this video right here for more on using your HomePods as default speakers for your TV and other devices like an Xbox or PlayStation using HDMI ARC. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.